And let's see. Are we ready? We we're at what four after? It kind of seemed to be sure. a stabilized yeah. number of people that attended. Yeah. Um, and I think these first two are yours, John. We've been trying to put names next to him so we know who's there are. Yeah. Uh, well, Jason can't make this time slot, but he has asked me to bug people about this again. Um, I think he addressed a lot of the feedback and has pushed somewhat recently a new version of this today, I think. And so, uh, is it, hold on, are we talking about the actionable agenda items or? Yeah, yeah sorry, first 22 is, uh, and 826. Standard base image annotations. Did you want to escort those through, John, and just kind of walk through them quick? I honestly haven't even looked at it. So um, I just wanted people to, if they had looked at it and had actionable feedback, uh, a time to talk about it. It's a very small PR, right? Um, so I'm not as happy with this as I was with the one everyone hated, but uh, I am happy to see anything land. Because you like the multi-list? Was that the major difference? Yeah, it was just a little less specific. Um, more abstract and so more generally useful and also having multiple is nice but uh we have a proposal later that makes me happy regardless and so i don't care as much and if one reference is uh enough for everyone to be happy then that's fine with me yeah i think that if, if we're landing in a good place here then you're happy with it's fine i think the problem is if it's too generic it's kind of hard to make tooling actionable on it right like if if you can't really and make a strong decision on what this thing is, then it's kind of hard to have uh, consistent tooling across all of it. And yes, there's a con common problem, right? Because we're solving, and OCI solves both a very specific problem uh, and also a very, very generic and abstract problem. And sometimes we mix the two contexts and it's hard to talk about why we're doing certain things. Um, is, this, is this data field gonna be unbounded? Uh, let's, let's it hold is bounded to, let's, let's by the, the right context order. of the descriptor. <laughs> let, let, let's try to, we, we said your Vincent, your feedback was let's make, get through a couple of actionable ones. So if we can, because sure. um, the data one, I think will be a little bit more of a discussion. So on A22, I think there's two, is this the one with two annotations? This is base image. Yeah, it's two, it's two annotations. So this was the uh, shoulds. I mean, they're annotations, so they're shoulds anyways, like you can use them, but how you should use them is effectively would only be enforced by some kind of conformance compliance tooling. And, and so you're, you, I mean, I don't guess that we really should, can even say must in these fields, because that would be arbitrarily implemented by registries so i i think to john's point i think we've got the right feedback coming on those on that one specifically on 822 so i think we just let that finish up i think it's getting pretty close i think there was just a some minor question on a, a sample because it, it, i i misread it said descriptor but it was actually the link was descriptor so it is just the digest that makes sense and then we're just basically wrestling with the same old story of Default registry, do you get a fully qualified URL? What does that mean? And so I'm I'm trying, because I'm also trying to drive this other thing where we want to decouple registry names from deployments and make that a mapping field, that when you do, we, we should basically ignore this concept that the one default registry is Docker Hub. Like I'm trying to make that go away. And so if you're really trying to say this is the ref, the, the from statement, that it should be fully qualified. So you actually could rebuild it or whatever it is you're trying to figure that out doesn't mean you have access to it like i wouldn't have access to john's personal you know registry but i can know that oh that's where that came from so i could go back to john going hey we're trying to fix this thing and it came from your registry hey can whatever that means give me access rebuild it whatever but if it's if it's just sitting there as a loose name that the it, that doesn't really help me anything it's the digest that really helps me there and if anybody else has a different viewpoint on it, but I think that's where we left the PR. So okay. just, just so that this feedback doesn't get lost, I want to say that I also agree with where John was coming from, uh, that I'm not as wild about where this proposal is right now. Um, 
the, the big issue for me is that in this proposal is trying to encode inheritance that one image comes from another image. And that's not really part of how the OCI image spec is written right now. I mean, to Vincent's point of there's no must here, it's it's just trying to say for the people that are doing the Docker build with the from statement that they have a way, a consistent way to know how they would trigger, like what is it based on? Because they can, so they could rebuild it. To your point, if you want to do uh, build packs or some other way that you're building the image or some of the other you know formats, then maybe you don't use this this, uh, yeah. this field. Well, I mean, I, I, that was that was actually I was just like scrolling to make sure that Misha was in this this thread because uh, like yeah. I I want this kind of information um, in there and discoverable somehow. But this this kind of like you know, history or information needs to be preserved somewhere. And that's kind of what the so bill of materials we've talked about before also like some way to spec out all this, even if it's just another object completely in the layers list that has its own yeah. like media type and otherwise, I, I would much, much rather see another object in the media list, media uh, in manifest list that has its own media type and structure. You're gonna love the proposal from later then. Um, yeah, I, I would just echo what Sam said because he made me realize something. Um, I, I think in the current form, the proposal is too prescriptive. Um, this, as in this should be the immediate sharing zero index layers. Uh, I think that's nice in that it's very specific, but um, I mean, we could say may instead of should, and that opens it up to me doing exactly what I wanna do, which is, um, you know, some artifact that represents my dependencies. That might be a single base image. It might also be, you know, a manifest list that references all of the uh, images I, I'm dependent on at build time. And so just changing that from a should to a may um, would make me happy. And why not just make it John's annotation and you can do what you want to do with it. And like, I, if you're, if we're gonna be so loose about it, that I don't know how any tool would make use of a standard annotation as opposed to there's a, that's a John's idea. Whatever the scenario you want to support, it doesn't have to be under the open containers namespace. It could be something else. And then it means exactly what you want it to mean. If we make something that's so generic in an annotation and we're trying to enable some tooling, that's then I don't know how that's done in any kind of consistent way. Well, I guess, it, I think this is very specific even if that should becomes a may. Um, it, it means something very specific and it is still pretty powerful, right? And so we don't even have to list any other situations. You know, if that should becomes a may, then uh, I think we're pretty good because you can verify if that is true, right? If it's if it's a may, you know, the client might do, do something differently than you expect, but it's still trivial for you to verify, wait a minute, these zero indexed layers don't match. Okay, so this isn't what I expected. This is not the uh, Docker from file base image. This is some other thing. Okay, so I, we could keep on going zero. What is zero index when it's a from or whatever? But th this is, starts to sound more than an actionable thing. I think that the from the time boxing of it, there's there's a conversation happening. We should figure out if we don't fully support it consistently across it then we don't have to. And if we can find a happy ground and add an OCI annotation, it seems to make sense, but the process seems to be working through in the PR feedback. Yep, I, I just mostly wanted to ping it to say, please give feedback because I, in the coming weeks, I would like to make this actually like a yes or no, go or no go decision. Yep. Okay, so just moving on, the next one is the data one. Uh, and I, um, John and I were kind of doing some feedback back on and forth on it. Um, I didn't read your latest comment, but. Yeah, I just pushed it, sorry. Um, but yeah, so I can talk about it briefly, but I opened this last week and um, there are situations where you are referring to content that may not make sense to actually require an HTTP request, right? So if we're talking about pulling an image, um, maybe you have a layer that is 64 bytes because this contains like a signature or something. It would be really nice if I didn't have to go across the wire to go get those 64 bytes when 
the the artifact that is pointing to it is less than that, or is is even more, right? So like, for for very small amounts of data, um, it would be really convenient if we could just embed them in the descriptor that describes them. Um, so this would be exactly the content you would have gotten if you were to fetch it through any other means, and you should verify it in exactly the same way you would. Um, but it would, just, it would it also be fetchable on the content addressable API? Uh, so this is something that came up in the PR. I think yes, for now. Um, one thing we could do is fix how the non-distributable layers work, because that is a quality that should not be in the media type, in my opinion. Um, so if we pulled like the non-distributability aspect out of a media type and made it even a Boolean or something, um, then we could use that behavioral expectation of, hey, this might not be in the registry or this not, might not be where you expect it to be to say, hey, this, is, this isn't there, right? Like, so clients would not expect it to be in the content addressable store when encountering it. Um, but yeah, I think for now, you would just duplicate things to make it easier and backwards compatible with existing registries, right? Because existing registries would expect yeah. that content to be there. Well, yeah, that's because that I was my, my next thought. Besides, I don't know how best to like set an upper limits on this so you're not like unmarshalling something that just literally makes your some red some implementation take a dump on the floor. Yeah, um, and, and but there's the the other piece is that that how how best would you know for old registry old clients and or old registries with new clients that you could see that a register you know a registry even supports this that if that field is not even returned back then it would be absolutely asking for that content addressable object next but rather than trying to make some other api of like do you support this feature like if the field is present then you might not have to I, um, it. I i would be surprised if registries could support this um but i guess you mean on the um for for the for the like reference counting part, right? Like registries expect there to be a blob uploaded if the manifest references it. Um, yeah, a registry that does support this might skip that. But you know, for for most registries, this you don't have to support it at all. And and the push time is not really a place where you care so much about duplicating the content. It, it one, it's a very small amount of content usually, uh, and two, pushing can be slower if this speeds up pulling. Um, and, and of course, this is an optimization that you as an artifact author are making. And so you can choose not to do this. And, and yeah. registries do not have the flexibility to choose whether or not to do this, right? Because they have to round trip the content addressable thing. So this is an entirely client side decision. And I, I generally worry about the payload size. I mean, a manifest was always intended to be here is a declarative information, declarative may not be the worst word. Here is a description of the content that has been stored. Here is some metadata around it so that you can make decisions. The, the config object lets you pull some information before you actually start dealing with the layers blobs um, because the layers blobs might get routed to another host. So there's this very structured interaction. I fully agree that we there's some places where I don't want to have to pull a blob to figure out the next step. Um, and we've been discussing this in the, the link list conversation of like, how do I get a list of signatures and know which one I really care about so I don't have to pull them all. Um, but the way this was written, it, it what it doesn't sound like it's bounded is to, can somebody just put a gigabyte worth of text in that string? Um, and what's what is the expectation of this manifest that's supposed to be relatively small? I, I think uh, to answer the first question, yes, I think it is valid to put a gigabyte in here. Um, whether or not a registry is going to take that from you, that's that's your problem, right? Like if you are embedding gigabytes of string data, um, you're going to have a bad time, right? In the same way that you can't push a layer with a million or an image with a million layers, right? There are limitations that exist in the world and it is your responsibility to abide by this, right? You, you also can't upload, you know, a hundred terabyte layer to a registry. Just there are limitations. So this is why I think it's, I, I can add to the PR, you know, this should be used for very small amounts of content perhaps. And we could even have a number, right? We could say- No, more, than, no more than 64 kilobytes. No, 
No one needs more yeah. than that. Right, so. right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, I think I that's would... a reasonable thing. Like we say registry URL should not be more than 256. And at first I was like, that seems kind of limiting. And then I actually created a namespace with 256 characters. Like, wow, that, that actually is really long yeah. and seemed reasonable. Um, but like the layer size, the layer counts, the layer size, like the different registries have different sizing. Like we've, we've all like, and we've seen ML images start to push those boundaries. Um, and to some of those you can argue no, but they're making sense. And to me, like a manifest, it's good to have some surface level, but if we can bound it to some reasonable textual size that if I return a manifest list in, a, in the API, that that's not the thing that's gonna blow it up. Um, I can yeah. see it being helpful, but just not the idea that's, that's truly duplicative of what's already in the blob. Right, so, so there's kind of two situations where you might wanna use this. Um, and I'm thinking about registries a lot, um, but of course all this applies in other contexts. But so uh, as, as something producing an image, right? As like say Docker, right? Producing the manifest myself, um, we can have some language in there that says, you know, you should consider the size of the embedded data when and what you're going to do with it, right? Because we shouldn't limit it. We shouldn't say this can't be more than X because that that might be useful in certain situations. But we we can be we can provide guidance that hey, uh, you might not be able to push this to a registry if it's too large, and so you should keep this bounded. And we might even say a number is like you should keep this under a kilobyte. Um, for broad compatibility reasons or something, right? On the other end, as a registry, there are not any APIs where I have the freedom to return something like this, right? Like, uh, I, I can't embed data in a um, like manifest that I'm returning. But if we did do all the things I want to do with listing manifests, uh, where we we call, hey, give me, tell me all the manifests in the registry, and the registry gives you a list of descriptors. In that list, the registry has the flexibility to embed the manifest data, right? And so you could ask the registry, hey, uh, give me all the manifests and include the data because I don't want to send you, you know, a, a thousand requests. I just want to send one giant request. Um, we're, we, that doesn't exist, right? This is hypothetical. But uh, in that situation, because the client isn't expecting a content addressable response, uh, this is a totally reasonable thing for the registry to do. And it would be up to the registry to decide the threshold for that, right? Because the client isn't expecting this to be, it's, it's an optimization, right? So if the client sees the data is embedded, okay, I can use that. But if, if the data is omitted because it's above some threshold the registry decided on, uh, then the client can just go fetch it again. And so it's a, there is a reasonable fallback that already exists. And so this is strictly an optimization. I guess I'm, I, I see this group and this OCI specs as being a way that there we can create more consistency across the registries to enable more tooling that isn't cloud or registry specific, because it's just frustrating all of our users. You know, the fact that a Docker pull, Docker run, you know, Docker push is just in the most simple works across all registries is been a huge thing that has brought the whole platform forward. The fact that we don't have listing APIs or searching APIs and and consistency on some of these things has been a, a huge detriment um, to us. To put to start saying like, hey, you could do this, and a registries might do this, and it might not. It feels like it provides more instability that we're just hacking stuff into something as opposed to coming with a better way. That a manifest is about the just you know the information the summary, and if you want the data, then you can get the data. Um, to I'd, say that I'd sometimes you can put it disagree. in it would be very destabilizing to what we're trying to drive. I, I think you're very wrong. Um, I agree with you. Your point stands for like the base image stuff. I kind of agree, right? It would be nice if this meant exactly one thing. But for this, it's, it's strictly an optimization, right? It, it, the, the existing model continues to work, even if you completely ignore this field, right? And so there's not there's no instability, right? It is only... In the same way that like HTTP caching stuff just works and you don't think about it, this would just work and you want to think about it. It would just work if the registries were when it consistently and the payload size. They don't have to. They don't have that's, to. That's, that's what he's saying is that if, if oh, they... But then what tooling? Are we talking about Google specific tooling that would work with the Google no, registry? No, no, or do you expect no. a registry tooling is supposed to chase every registry with a different implementation? 
how many if your registry if your registry and or tooling could make those optimizations because i mean i could imagine this even going into container d that it just like looks for that data field and if it's there then it has an optimized experience and it like you like you said it, you know the 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 baseline experience on all registries but if a registry so chose to implement this support for this data field then some clients would have a more optimized experience yeah this this allows progressive enhancement right there's no backward incompatibility problem both clients choosing to support or not and both registries choosing to support or not works all always there's no there's no place where this is a problem well i think we're highlighting there are there is places where a problem where is is the idea that the registry can stuff the data field if it wasn't uploaded with it in the first place no absolutely not o only okay. in non content addressable context so and none of those really exist um so it's not a problem currently uh in my hypothetical listing proposals, yeah, the registry could choose to populate that, but it is a completely valid implementation. Do never populate this field un for a registry unless it, you know, the registry doesn't have flexibility currently in basically any API. It has to return what was pushed to it because all of mm -hmm. it is content addressable. I'm, I'm completely on, on board with it. Uh, that, and I, I think I think that's the kind of the interesting part that even as, as you were talking and I was trying to kick around like, if somebody did, like you said, even if somebody did find a registry that supports it or make one and they shove way too much data in that field, they would get to experience how they're having a bad time and not, you know, or just get blocked, which is probably the, the safer, nicer way so that we don't find like uh, uh, the payload, the payload, small like signature piece of it or like attestation or otherwise, like small, small things. I can see how this is pretty neat. It's something we, we talked about for a while of even like wanting to push towards like HTTP2 or like keep alive and all these other kinds of optimizations, like reduce round trips as much as possible. Yeah. And and to be clear, like this is not coming from me. I found this. Uh, like I thought it would be cool if we did this. And I went to go at like create a PR and I found, oh, they already decided to do this earlier. And so I messaged uh, Stephen Day. I was like, hey, what's this field for? And he said exactly what I'm proposing. And so like this, this was planned to exist. And I am just trying to drive it forward because it's a great idea. Cool. That's all I need. Uh, you got this. So, you know, so to summarize the, the field has already been there. It's already supported in Docker distribution. It just didn't have a proof of concept behind it. In it is reserved. Fully. It's reserved. In, in the spec, right. it's a reserved field. And so right. let's make it a real field. Right. I, I think I, I, for sanity, you, you might want to hold this open or, you know, as a draft, work in progress until we get proof of concept on both the sure. client and the registry side. And then, and then you can, we can drive it forward from there. I think it might make more sense to see what kind of optimizations and see if there's anything else that, you know, it introduces like that the limitation of when the client doesn't have it, maybe it's too much data. What, what's think. nice is you don't really need registry support, right? The registry doesn't know about this at all. I'm not on the um, client side. So oh, but yeah. it, there's a size constraint that I think we said we want to have some kind of reasonable size constraint on it because we all do optimizations around how we store manifests. So that but we that can already exists. Huh? There's already a size constraint, right? Like I can't is there push a, size a gigabyte constraint on the data element? Not in the spec, but in real life, right? I assume if I push a gigabyte manifest to ACR, it's going to choke. It's going to give me a 500 yeah. or a 400, right? That, that's... You, you can't even have a, a whole lot of annotations before we're going to barf on <laughs> right? So, so yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, and I, yeah, this isn't very actionable. Maybe this should have been part of the discussion, but I would like people to look at this and give feedback because I put yeah. it together. Please take a look. Okay, what do we got that's next here? Me again. Um, cool stuff. This uh, one, I didn't so, quite understand what this one was, if you want to. Sure, so we talked about this three or four weeks ago. Um, there are currently, there's no way to really mutate things in a registry safely. Um, and, and I'm talking about tags specifically. Uh, so if I wanted to push a new image, um, let's say, so, okay. The use case that came up is like when you're producing multi-platform images, it would be really cool to fan out 
a build for like each platform to some build farm where you have like an ARM machine and an AMD 64 machine. It would be great if those could coordinate at the registry um, by say checking to see, hey, does an image exist at this tag already? It does. Great. I'll append what I just built to that image uh, and then update it. And so you can like incrementally build up a, a multi-platform image. You can't do that today because of race conditions that exist, right? So I might overwrite what's already there, or I, you know, I might not see someone push something. It, it's a problem. And HTTP solves this problem using conditional requests. Uh, you, you have e tags, and then you have, um, let me see, let me open this because I can't remember the exact headers, but there's like if match and if none match headers. And there's well defined semantics in HTTP for, you know, hey, don't overwrite this or only overwrite this if the current value matches what I expect it to be. Right. So we just get some optimistic concurrency controls, and all we have to do is document them. We don't have to make them up. We just say, hey, you know, this is HTTP. Let's let's do HTTP the way it's meant to be, um, and that's what I'd like. I'd like to just call it out specifically and say, hey, registry should return e tags on manifests, and registry should respect conditional request headers. That's it. It's small. No, it makes sense because tags are the only place today that we have. Well, index, I guess that's is another place. Index and tags. Well, an index actually is only updatable because it's related to a specific tag because an index itself is its own digest. So it's really tags are the only place in a registry where we have uh, update semantics because everything else is immutable. Yep. And I, mean, I would like to flesh out maybe uh, the PR with more examples, right? But uh, it really is just, hey, Implement this RFC over here, please. No, part of the the notary stuff, we're we're going to have to introduce tag signing, and this has been one of the things. Like in everything other than a tag signing, you're just signing a digest, so that's relatively easy. You want a, a signature to be associated with something. You want to be able to add signatures later on, and you can add them to a digest because that's the basic design. Um, to add something to a tag which can be updatable, that there is some conditions there that would be great to have put some locking around it. So this makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so I don't know if anyone thinks that's a terrible idea. I think it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I would love people to give feedback or maybe add their own use cases or examples. Um, and then I can, I can keep pushing on it. We probably don't want this for 1.0 of the spec, but maybe one point, whatever, I don't know. Does a is anyone who like can speak to a registry implementation say like whether or not you already respect this or if you would like to implement this? I'm curious about willingness or existing support to for this thing. Uh, from an ACR I don't know whether we do. I, I'm doubting we do, but if we don't, we should. Like I, I do. We this has been a problem. Uh, we the geo replication stuff. This is one of the places where. Uh, because we support master, you know, active active scenarios. There's there are places where this kind of thing has showed up. This really doesn't completely solve it, um, but it gets closer to solving some of the individual uh, region updates. Yeah, I think the goal here is just to create that primitive that lets you do an atomic update, or have that atomic update fail, so that you can try again, or whatever failure behavior you want. Mm -hmm. It's definitely something we in the official images have struggled with a lot. Yeah, I think this opens up a lot of use cases that were previously impossible or just everyone was living with race conditions and <laughs> crossing their fingers, right? It, it definitely, that's why I was grimacing. <laughs> it's like, oh man. <laughs> It's a, well, you, it's, I like it. You made it more granular. You didn't really tie it to um, multi arc manifest updates, right? Or the index updates. It's not like, because there has been other conversations we've been debating should a registry manage the updating of the index itself? And there's some interesting ideas there. There, you know, and there's certain places where there's good registry specific implementations to kind of innovate in that space. This isn't going that far. This is simply just saying that, look, 
there's contention on an updatable element of a registry. It'd be great if we had a, a better semantics to be able to handle that and have that defined in the spec. Again, back to here is something that's in the spec that it should work consistently across registries because we've implemented whatever version of the spec, assuming we could ever get a 1.0 out. Um, but yeah, to get this clarified would be great. Cool. Uh, that's it for me. There's, one, there's a question that just popped in chat there. Oh. On top. Sorry, I, I, I don't know if my mic is working. Um, but yeah, like the conditional request stuff, I see that there's a must in there. Um, if we're for people who are like building on top of, say, like S3 clones that don't implement strong consistency, how would we possibly do this? Uh, so you wouldn't supply e tags for in your responses. Um, the, the must is guarded by an if, and that if uh, conceptually cannot exist if the registry doesn't support e tags for manifest. So, uh, you, you would... but like e tags are also provided by like proxies and such, um, like CloudFront. Sure. Um, Most registries also already provide e tags. So suddenly not providing them could be perceived as a breaking change because I'm sure there's someone out there relying on them. I'm certain of it. I, I mean, sure. yeah, like putting Squid or Apache in front of the registry uh, automatic, like it, it, it automatically generates e tags. And I, I think that's like non-standard behavior to change that because it means that downstream components like CloudFront wouldn't be able to cache your images or your layers. Sure. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, we could invent a header or something in the response that says like, you know, OCI dash something stupid uh, that says like, yeah, I un I understand conditional requests. Um, if if we want this to be a the registry to communicate support for it, so that clients can rely on it. You know, I have a problem with that. That seems reasonable enough to me. Okay, I'll I'll add that to the PR. Uh, we can keep going if no one else has concerns or questions. Did Did you want to uh, try to get this into the first release, or were you thinking? Uh, yeah. I don't know. I I don't have strong opinions about the releases because they don't really affect me. Um, I mean, it's just a number, so it doesn't matter. I just want this to land eventually, and I would like everyone to implement it, whether or not that's in the spec one or one point one, whatever. Just trying trying to avoid feature creep if if it's not. Yeah, I think I I, I defer to. Um, Josh and others that have been trying to get the 1.0 out, but I, I think that they're, we've had 1.0 queued for a year, two, three. Um, we'll run, run C's on four years now, <laughs> I think. So try, try to avoid that if we can, because yeah. we get a very narrow scope on what we have for 1.0. I'd like to see a boat on getting that one done. <laughs> But I like this option. It yeah. looks like a really cool feature. Cool. All right, moving on. Uh, next one was two, wait, was that? No, that was the document condition request. Uh, the next one is uh, Dan. Yeah, hello. I opened um, an issue with a bunch of text um, explaining some motivations and use cases and design discussions, as well as an accompanying pull request to kind of visualize the exact concrete changes we're proposing against the uh, distribution repo. So both links should be in here. Uh, currently, if I look, yeah. Okay, so I did get both links 828 and 827 are on the image spec repository. Do you want to just um, present, Dan, so you can sure. focus through as you're talking about? Let's see if I can get Zoom to cooperate. Is that working? Yep, it is. Cool. People can see now. 
I have to switch because it immediately opened in a new tab when I click the link. All right, so here is the pull request. Um, we can see a diff. Um, <clears throat> and then the longer discussion is in the issue, which I'll jump to in a second after we talk about this. Um, the summary here is that I meant to propose make another kind of concrete um, self uh, freestanding proposal on ways we can start linking objects in a registry, um, and even not in a registry as we, we propose here. Um, this covers a lot of the same use cases as the proposal, I think it's in the open containers artifacts repo as a draft PR. Um, but the, the real use case is around signing containers. You can build up, John gets excited because you can do a whole bunch of other cool stuff when you can do linking this way. Um, but the real thing I want to use this for and the reason I'm pushing forward is because uh, we want better support for signing of containers and other artifacts in a registry. Um, we have a tool called Cosign, um, which you can see and play around with if you're interested, but it's kind of a proof of concept or working tool that um, does container signing and verification on top of the existing OCI spec without any changes. Uh, so from that, I wanted to extract the smallest possible set of changes to make that stuff better and not have to do the hacky stuff um, that it's doing, but it does tend to work pretty well. So the real primitive that we need is a way to push an artifact and associate that with another artifact, and then a way to query all of those uh, references later, like a, a reverse index. So if we jump back to 827, let me figure out how to do that without opening a new tab. I think that's an issue, so I'll just go back here, actually. Yeah. Here's the my proposal explaining the background, um, how uh, designed this um, I mean, goal of making this as backwards compatible and as easy to implement and as small of a change as possible uh, while still enabling all of the use cases and requirements that we've identified for signing of things. Um, the link PR here again shows the exact small set of changes. Um, there's some examples of what this looks like. Uh, to try to keep this minimal, we use the existing types that we have instead of making up new types. Um, so the uh, these references actually take the form of a descriptor. Um, so it's basically one new field on image index and descriptor as well, which is um, the one that powers some really complex use cases but to reference another descriptor. Um, then uh, this is all in one change now to make it kind of self-contained. Um, uh, but this also does propose one other change to the distribution spec, which we can turn into a PR there if we decide to move this forward. Um, of one new read-only API um, to get the references associated with an object. Um, so most of the stuff is in here. Um, there is this one extra change. We've discussed some of the implications for registries and how they might implement that um, below. Got some example use cases, the signing and verifying one is the one that I really care about, but you can imagine other ones we can fill in later, like attaching S bombs or other types of information you get after the container is built. Um, feel free to add stuff in the issue, we can merge it up into here. Um, there's also the one main alternative um, I considered that I discussed here and why we didn't like it, um, but there's a way to do this with no changes to any of the existing types with only some registry side changes. Um, that would look sort of like this, where you would push something by pushing it um, under an existing reference um, rather than pushing it to the top level. Um, and that works with get and delete and everything like that too. Um, I like this one at first, but after I thought about it a little bit more um, and talking to John, I said the, the other one's probably cleaner, even though it does require the type changes instead. Um, so, yeah, feel free to take a look at these. I only got them out a couple hours before the meeting. Yeah. Apologies for that. But I did want to you know, get this out so we can start discussion and figure out if this is a good path forward. Yeah. What What do you think your, uh, or what are your feelings on if, if garbage collecting, if something has references? I like it. Um, John says that we should leave that up to the registries to decide if they want to do some registries don't even garbage collect, you know, tag, um, things attached to tags when they get deleted. Yeah. Um, so I think in general, um, this gives registries the information they need to garbage collect if they want to, but it's up to them um, if they want to. Yeah, because that was uh, also, even something that kind of stalled stalled me and a few of us out when we were talking about like the ex that extensions PR that I know Steve you've referenced a few times. I'd like adding these extensions that might bring new references, you know, like pushing, pushing that kind of 
decision all the way back. Like eventually it's just, it's not an extension. It's a whole feature that you have to bring on or not. Um, right. And like garbage collection, because I don't, I don't think it should. I mean, like they could, but I don't think they should because it could be that I push, I might even push a signature to my repo that I can address. <laughs> yep. Or something that's in another registry that I attested. Um, completely unlinked. I don't even have access to push or relate to that other, other. I don't have privileges to that, you know, Ubuntu image and Docker IO, but I pushed it to VBATS on Quay or whatever and saying like I attest, attest to it somehow. Right, you're convincing me more that John was right and that this text is correct. Um, registries are free to implement garbage collection as they see fit, is how I put it. Um, I like John. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes he's right. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, no, you're, you're completely right, though. Um, I think the, the other alternative that we have here would make it more clear that garbage collection um, would make sense because you're actually pushing it under something else. And so, um, yeah, moving it to the top level and then saying you're free to do whatever you want, just make it clear to your users, makes sense to me. John, do you want to talk about some of the crazy stuff you love and we're getting excited about earlier about the yeah, making of uh, descriptors in a list? Right, uh, so, so there are a couple, I have a couple like, I want to bike shed this a little bit points. Um, and depending on how that goes, this gets really powerful, but also a little crazy. Like. Right now, reference is a is an object. It is just one thing, but why not let that be a list, say? Um, and then you can create like arbitrary trees of this stuff, really DAGs of this stuff. Um, and if you combine this with the data field addition, uh, you can now inline an entire tree in one object, right? So you could. Since, since this makes descriptor recursive, uh, you could have just sprawling trees of references all embedded in a single object. And I think that's neat. Um, it is, it is academically neat. And that was, that was it, so that was, my mind was just going there, but it would, it would hit some other threshold limit, like too many objects or too many layers or whatever pretty quickly. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, you'd run into natural limitations of the underlying storage systems pretty quickly if you tried to do arbitrary depth. But what's nice is that they can't be cyclic, at least, you know. Um, the, the other Randomly point is- they could. Like, you could. You could try enough random choices and get uh, 256. Uh, yeah, go break shot. Magic 256 say, number. Yeah. Um, the, other, uh, the, the other point I thought was interesting is that going back to the base image discussion, um, you know, this kind of works for that, right? So I could push up a um, some artifact that references um, the image I care about and says like, hey, these are all of the inputs to your build. Uh, and I could, instead of having it embedded in the manifest, I could have this external reference to contain all that information that I care about. You might want uh, to add that as a use case because I'm pretty sure even just that that right there could build quite the story for for some of the stuff that Nisha is in investigating, Nisha Kumar. Yeah, I, you're right. So that's one of these it starts to get well. weird because this was the thing that we did. Like, if you look at the artifact manifest proposal, it's it's doing the same thing. It's just we're not trying to make breaking changes because that was the problem we had when we tried to do other things to the image manifest and so forth. the The original proposal had two types. One was here's a manifest link manifest collection. So you can reference an uh, SBOM, you can say a reference another thing, but it would be in the same repo because that was the permission boundaries. We also had another references collection that can reference things that were outside of that repo. So that enables like the Helm chart to be able to say these are the images it references. So you can actually copy things across. But that's the one that I think John, you pushed back on specifically that you didn't want to be able to support things cross repos. So Vincent, that's kind of the challenge we've been facing is should you be able to loosely reference something outside of the uh, immediate repo that you're in? So that's why we pulled that piece out because there was so much controversy around it. Right. I think so it's I'd... a good additive thing that we should consider adding later on, but I wanted to handle the direct linkage first um, and then, then get into the loose references. So I right so so this pulls out some of that and in, in, in a slightly different way. Um, I think 
So have like this enables cross repository things if you really want them, right? So you could have, because this is effectively a weak reference to an object, right? Um, you could have in the URLs field, like, hey, I'm referencing this thing over somewhere else. Um, and, and that's a way we already do that today to, to reference objects not in the same name space. Um, so that's like composing two properties of a descriptor to achieve a very complicated thing, which is, you know, multi-repository artifacts. Um, but uh, so the, my problem with that mostly was like, if you expect a registry to maintain some that relationship um, across repository boundaries, that's really complicated. But if you let the registry say like, oh, a reference, you know, I don't, I'm not going to count these weak references as like, you know, pinning garbage collection stuff. Um, this gives you a different kind of descriptor that can have different properties within the registry. And so I think this solves that in a little, in kind of. I think the question though is how do you define a weak versus hard reference, whatever strong reference, whatever, how you want to do the counter of weak reference. The, the way I would define it is the current, the current references in the manifest, which are, which have a config descriptor are the hard references, right? And, and these are weak references that we would be adding to every descriptor type, including layer and manifest config, right? So, so, so it's not just the weak and strong connotation, it's the downward or upward reference also kind of thing. Like a manifest that has layers, none of those aren't just strong references because that's the thing that defines the thing, right? Like a, a manifest has to have layers in it before the manifest can be uploaded. The, the thing that we're trying to do with the SBOMs and signatures is I can upload things after it's been in a registry. So you, similar to a manifest can't be accepted until the blobs have been accepted, you want to make sure that the thing that you're referencing, whether it be through a references collection or manifest collection, you want to say whether that thing must exist before it to be accepted or it can exist before it's accepted. And how do you differentiate those two? Yeah, I think that's why we want to make it a new field. So one of my one of my problems with the current artifacts manifest proposal is that uh, it reuses the manifests field to have new semantics. And so I could come up with a, a bad registry implementation that considers those strong references because it looks a lot like a manifest list. Uh, by putting this in a separate thing, and we, we can have the freedom to define what this field means. And I, I think, you know, basically this is a weak reference. You know, anything under the reference uh, field, that's a weak descriptor. Um, so it, it may not exist in the registry, right? When you so say it's a weak thing, whatever you mean the reference it. is weak in the descriptor. Uh, I guess I'm, I'm trying to understand the type model, right? Because the yeah, yeah, yeah. I, the, I think both we, the config in the manifest and each layer, right, in the manifest are descriptors themselves. So yeah. it's, it's hard to talk about. When you added like, this yeah. reference to the descriptor type, you made manifest more powerful by having both the strong type references and these weak these new references in the descriptors that they, they can be considered right. weak type references so that's interesting yeah, yeah. and that, that's that's what i was trying to get at with my comments on the artifact manifest proposal is that this should this is powerful i want to use it everywhere um and so <laughs> well like, it got me confused when there was a get on just the ref these weak references i was like i don't i didn't quite understand that yeah why, why wouldn't yes, you just get the manifest right and then that right. would have all those references in it right um, right. And so that, so the registry part is the like backwards pointing part, right? Um, we don't really need to store new information technically, right? All of this is in the content. So you could satisfy an implementation of the like index by just crawling every single thing in a repository and, and populating it as you need. Um, but yeah, what, what I was talking about earlier was the content referenced by the reference descriptor and not the containing descriptor. Uh, may not be present in a repository, right? So right. It, it is, it is so basically- it's an optimization a, that could have been put in the manifest when it was pushed. Uh, maybe, I don't understand what you just said. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, you, you could have added these weak reference references in the, in the descriptors for each layer and for the manifest config therefore providing the extra detail that Nima has been asking for since forever. 
Yeah. Being right. able to create a tree. Yeah. And so the, what gets tricky is like what, you know, populating the response from the registry when you ask it, Hey, tell me every manifest, uh, that references this subject. Um, that's hard, right? Most of the hard part is there, but deciding yeah. on how we express that relationship in the format is what we want to accomplish here, I think. Um, okay. but, but yeah. not, so not just storing it, but also you're looking for some kind of an API that the registry could use each of those references as links if they've got access to it as possible. Right. The, the theory goes is the reverse lookup thing is basically you're not looking for a specific signature per se. You're looking for an artifact that uh, the, the WordPress image and does it have a signature? So it's you, you kind of have to you want to start with the WordPress image and then decide does it have a specific signature that allows you to pull it? And that's the reverse link API that, that the registries don't support today. It knows how to find an image and the, the layers for that image. It doesn't know how to excuse me, um, find other artifacts that are referencing that okay. enhanced an existing artifact. The, the signatures are Nest Bomb, for instance. Yeah, no, thanks. So that's the Lynx API that we've been talking about or whatever it's called yeah. here. Yeah, so the, yeah. So at the end of the day, what we want is I want to ask, hey, Docker Hub, tell me every single thing that references Ubuntu. Um, and when I say references, I mean, has embedded in it this reference descriptor. Um, and so registries now are obligated to index this stuff, right? And so that's a big change. But if we all agree on it and we all implement it, then wow, we've got this magical thing. I mean, fundamentally, I think that's the piece that we've all been trying to, to get to is how do we add additional content to a registry without breaking the the seal of the original content. We can't change the digest. We don't want to change the tag. How do I add something to it after the fact? Um, the, the challenge that we've been facing, we went through this with the artifacts is what can we change in the manifest as it exists today? Because there's not good versioning and everybody was like super nervous around making changes to image manifest and image index. So the, what all, what the, the only real difference I'm seeing here, in addition to the fact that it's a collection or single, is whether we're changing the existing manifest or we're adding a new manifest so that there is no breaking changes to the tooling that's already using this today. So I think I think you and I are getting tripped up over incompatible terminology, where there's a difference between something that's backwards compatible and something that is a breaking change. Um, I prefer if we can make backwards compatible changes but I refuse to make breaking changes. And I don't think that this is a breaking change. Um, this is a backwards incompatible change, right? Because uh, clients now have to do new things, but um, it, it doesn't break existing behavior in any way. That's purely additive. It doesn't change any of the semantics. And of we had that same argument stuff. when we added the artifacts, when we proposed add an artifact type property to the manifest or some other things. So like Derek should be here for some of these other conversations, which I don't see him here. Um, but that was explicitly why we didn't go down that path and why we've been going down a new manifest proposal. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, I'm going to push back on anything that is both not backwards compatible and not breaking. Um, and we're past the backwards compatible part into the maybe breaking part. Um, and I don't want anything that is breaking. Yeah. I don't think anybody's proposing. Well, I, I think that's the I mean, argument you for this is that the schemas today don't, the clients today would not work well when new elements show up in the manifest. I didn't think that that should be a change. I mean, anything should be able to ignore new properties. That would be my argument. That's that way I would expect to write code, but apparently we have enough clients today that, that didn't handle that well. And there was a huge concern around that, um, which is why we wound up using the config, the manifest config media type, because there was no comfort in adding another property. Um, because it is additive, I, I completely agree with you. But that's that's how we wound up where we did because there was no comfort in that. Um, the same and reason I, why that's and I, that is the reason why we've got a new manifest. Well, it's not breaking; it is additive, and it gives us the opportunity to be very definitive around the rules around uh, uh, delete and reference counting. 
Um, the manifest collection, which again, we can name anything we want. The reason it's a manifest collection is because it is referencing manifests uh, as opposed to blobs. And we can then define semantics. If it references a manifest that it doesn't have a tag, it should get deleted. If it has a tag, it gets ref counted and it can still be there. Um, it allows us to give us those same semantics. And, and there is a collection because we felt like while we don't have a, a more than one scenario yet, we, we want to make sure that we can add a more than one scenario. Um, and then the links API, we're basically saying the same thing. Yeah, there's, I don't think we have time to really dig into, I have opinions, but um, I, yeah, I would like feedback on this and please bike shed, especially things that I want to bike shed, like, should this be a list? Is there a better name than reference? I came up with subject or subjects. I think that might, that may be more specific, but I would love to continue this discussion on the PR or the issue. Thanks everyone. Yeah, we're at three. Um, just reminder, please get things in the hack docs so we people can plan appropriately for their schedule. It's this we we're going to cancel and it showed up last minute. So I don't know if that's why we have fewer people today. So thanks, folks. We'll pick it up and watch the recording, and we'll pick up next week. Maybe weak reference, John. Well, yeah. Okay. Naming's hard. See you guys. Yes.